Welcome to Fringe Element Week 1 Picks Against the Spread, competition to end all competitions. My name is Braden Gall. You can follow me on Twitter, at Braden Gall. Joining me each and every week on this here short-form show, giving you picks for every single game in the SEC, is good friend of mine and fellow co-host on another podcast, the Cover 2 podcast, and the writer and the editor extraordinaire of Athlon Sports, Stephen Lassen. How are you, sir? Doing great. Thanks for getting me on camera. I know that was one of your goals for this season was to get me on camera. So uh, excited to be here. I'm looking forward to talking some SDC ball every week and making some picks that are sure to go wrong. So this will be a competition every single week. You and I are going to get we'll give like our actual best bets, like ones that we actually have money on. But the point of this show is to pick every single game in the SEC that has a spread. None of these FCS games. That were that have spreads. We're gonna pick every single game, and we're gonna see if anyone can like go above five hundred. We're gonna see who wins between you and I. We're gonna have a healthy competition. Right now, Vegas has you favored at like minus two hundred to win this competition. I'm about plus two fifty, which is not my weight, by the way. Close, but not my weight. Um, so we're gonna have some fun, and uh, we're gonna come out every Friday morning for you guys. Uh, obviously, we're out a little early with the games on on Thursday this week. Uh, but check us out on the YouTube page. Make sure. You turn on the notifications for 40 Sports, of course. And Steven, you got your own YouTube page. So tell people where what, what you got going on over there. I do. All CFB 365 got college football content, uh, you know, throughout the year during your know, weekly previews, predictions, you know, big picture stuff in college football. So, hey, if you like college football, all CFB 365, hit the subscribe notification there. And and to be honest with you, Steven, like for everybody listening, that you have been, I've known you for almost 20 years, and I'm not sure there's anyone that knows more about college football so I think this is awfully dumb of me to try to beat you in a picks competition, but I'm going to try and there will be some stakes at the end of the year. We haven't figured that out yet, but there will be some stakes at the end of the year. Like and if you, actual stakes or like te- could be table stakes, could, could be, be stakes. Yeah. Yeah. could be a lot of stakes. Um, however, if you lose to me, you will not hear the end of it like ever in the history of your life. Just so you know. Yeah, I've lost to you in a lot of fantasy uh, leagues, too. So, I mean, I've, I haven't heard the end of uh, all the keeper leagues and all those. But this one, you might never let me live this one down if I lose to, to you. This is a true story, folks. I have won a few NFL championships against Steven. Uh, I think I've lost to you five or six times in the college fantasy championship game um, that we play in. And I think you've beaten me like half a dozen times. I get there every year. And half a dozen times, I can't, I can't beat you. It's, it's unbelievable. So anyway, there you go. Uh, your bona fides are, are have been explained. You are one of the smartest, best college football pr- people in the business. We're going to give you picks against the spread for every single SEC game every single Friday on YouTube. Go subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that great stuff. Follow them on Twitter at Athlon Steven. Okay, you ready to go? Let's do it. Thursday night, Ball State plus thirty five against Tennessee. Where are you going? I like Tennessee, Braden. I, I think, you know, first of all, it's one of those games where you know Tennessee just has so much offensive firepower. And you look back at last year, I mean, Tennessee beat Bowling Green by 32 points. So if you think, you know, kind of look at that from this season, Tennessee probably better on offense than they were last season. I like the idea of Tennessee just opening things up with all the uh, some of the losses that they've had a receiver getting guys like Broom McCoy, Jalen uh, Hyatt kind of ready for that game against Pitt next week. Ball State last year gave up more points than they scored. So this is a, it's an offense that wasn't exactly very explosive. They have a new starting quarterback. So I like Tennessee to cover this week. I, I'm I am also I'm also going to go Tennessee. I don't like this, but they're at home. New Neyland Stadium, all the new reno- renovations that are taking place. You got more booze going on in the building now. Uh, I think the offense is great. I want to see some playmakers on defense make some havoc plays. And if they get a few turnovers and if they get a few uh, drive stoppers, some sacks, I think that's where the de- they need to find some of those pieces on defense. But I'm with you. Tennessee's almost guaranteed to score 35 points in the first half in this game with their offense. I'll take the Vols minus the 35. All right, we're even right now. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. We both had Vandy minus the points last week. I'm not lying about that. So we started off the season 1-0 and and 1-0. and now I'm assuming Tennessee's not one of your is not one of your top picks, right? That's right. Yeah, Got not it. one of my top picks this week. Louisiana Tech plus twenty at Missouri. A lot of young players coming out and getting to show up for Missouri for the first time. Where are you going, Stephen? I'm excited to watch Luther Burden at Missouri, but overall, I think I'm going to take Louisiana Tech to cover in this game. Louisiana Ooh. Tech, a bit of a mystery. So they have a new coach, Sonny Cumby. He comes over after being the interim coach at Texas Tech last season. Matthew Downey, may remember him. He was at Georgia. 
He's their starting quarterback. They're going to run the air raid. There's a lot of mystery. Keep in mind, Louisiana Tech kept it close against Mississippi State and NC State last year. They are a lot of new pieces, a lot of new, but 20 points with Louisiana Tech breaking in. Uh, you know, it's mystery a little bit. Missouri, some of the changes. I'm going to take the Bulldogs to cover on Thursday. Who remembers Matthew Downing? Who remember? Like you're like as you might remember Matthew. Downing. Nobody remembers who that is. Give me the Tigers. Give me the five star freshman. Give me. I got to pick something different here to change some things up. Give me Brady Cook. Give me Eli Drinkowitz developing the offense. I have no idea what Missouri is going to be on defense, but give me Mizzou minus the twenty points. And there we go. We have our first disagreement. I love it on the pod, on the show, on the video. I don't even know what this is called on the competition. Whatever. I'm just excited to have you here, Stephen. Uh, all right. Oregon plus 17 points against the Georgia Bulldogs in Atlanta. Where are you going? I'm taking Georgia to cover. Now it doesn't make me feel great with the big spreads of 17 points. You know, I usually like to stick to ones that are, uh, especially in a, in, a, in a top 25 matchup like this, but you know, I, I think for Oregon, you know, the familiarity with, with Dan Lanning, knowing Georgia, well, the personnel I think could pay off early on. I'm just not sure that the ducks can put together enough drives consistently. I think once the Georgia kind of settles in defensively and offensively, I love Oregon's linebackers, but I think eventually uh, Georgia will just have too much firepower. So 17 is a lot, but I think the dogs can do it. God, this is the one where I feel like I can beat you on it. And if I could take the Ducks, I could beat you here it, with that bat. This screams backdoor cover. This is like 31. This is like 31 to 10. And then they throw up that backdoor cover and it cover and, and somehow they, 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 they hit it. The, they hit the number. I got to take Georgia too, man. I want to go differently, but I'm with you. I don't think they have long enough sustained drives over a long enough period of time. I'll go with Georgia, but I don't feel good about it because I want to go differently than you. Uh, Cincinnati l getting six and a half points at Arkansas. Cincinnati at Arkansas, Stephen Lassen. This one's tough. I, I feel like a touchdown seems about right for Arkansas. So I'm going to take the Hogs to cover. Uh, this is one I would probably, if, if you ask me to, it's not one of my, my favorite bets for this week, okay. just because I, I do think Cincinnati, even though they lost a lot on defense, I, I think giving Luke Fickle an off season to figure things out, they're going to be just fine on defense and offense. I, I go back to the end of last season. I mean, Cincinnati got pushed around by Alabama in the playoff game. I know it's a completely different uh, you know, test when you're playing Alabama versus Arkansas and, and Alabama is in its own stratosphere. But I do think Arkansas with four starters back in the offensive line, the running backs that Arkansas has, that's going to, if, if Arkansas gets that going, they can control this game. And of course, KJ Jefferson's there too. I'm taking Arkansas, I'll lay the six and a half. This is one of my top bets of the week. So we need like a little star emoji that pops up on the screen <laughs> that says like top bet of the week here. I I'm taking Arkansas. Uh, minus the six and a half. If it was seven, seven and a half, I might not take it, but I like the six. I think they are two extremely well coached teams. Uh, but absolutely give me give me the hogs here. I think line of scrimmage. I think KJ Jefferson is the difference. So give me the hogs. Last one for you to go first, and then I'll go first on the next five so that you don't feel like you're getting uh you're getting the short end of the stick here. Um, this is gonna be Florida getting two and a half points at home against the Utes. Who you got? Man, this is tough. I think if it was three or over, I would probably take Florida here. But I think at two and a half, I think I'm taking the Utes. I think so. it's one of those almost ones like, who do you think wins outright? I've got Utah winning close. I love the, bat the physical battle between the new era of Florida under Billy Napier, Utah's physicality with you know Cameron Rising, Tavion Thomas coming in there, and Utah's defense – Lost Devin Lloyd, still think the front seven is going to be really good this year. So a lot of anticipation for me just to see what Florida looks like with Anthony Richardson. But I like Utah to win close, so I'll take the Utes to cover. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I've got Utah, man. I think the Utes go in there and push them around. Unless Anthony Richardson does something spectacular, I think the Utes go in there and they wear them down in the first half. And then in the fourth, third and fourth quarter, they pull away with long physical drives, pounding the football against a depleted Florida front seven. I like the Utes to go in there and make a huge statement for the Pac-12. I think it's important for the Pac-12. I think Kyle Whittingham, this is the logical next step of the progression for the Utah program, which is to build into this point. And Florida is in like complete first step of the rebuilding process. So give me the Utes here. All right, I'll, I will go first from now on because I made you go first in the first five games there. Troy plus the 22 against Ole Mississippi. Look, look, I like John Summerall. I haven't hidden my love. He's been on this show. Uh, I love I love Troy's defense. I think they're better than people think. I have major questions about every single thing Ole Miss. Like, 
Don't know about the quarterback because Lane Kiffin doesn't know about the quarterback. Don't know. The offensive line is good. Don't know about the front seven. Don't know about the linebackers. Don't know about the safeties. Don't know about anything. They're going to score a bunch of points. I think Troy's defense and what could be the all-time leading tackler in NCAA history, Carlton Marshall, I think he's the guy. I think they do a good enough job with a little backdoor cover. Give me Troy plus the 22. We agree. I, oh, I like come this on. Troy. I like this Troy uh, spread. I think it's just it's too much for a Troy team that is experienced on defense. They give the fewest yards per play in the Sun Belt last season, and they're experienced across the board. I think the big question for Troy is offensively. I mean, they come into this game with, uh, you know, they, they weren't very good on offense last year, 23 points a game. You know, can they score if it gets a high scoring game? But Ole Miss has just so many new pieces, and especially with the quarterback situation, is it a good thing that, you know, Lane Kiffin can't pick because they have two good quarterbacks or maybe one just hasn't pulled away? So I think with all the new pieces, that's really one of the things that makes week one hard to predict is just you don't know how these new transfers and everything meshes so i think given all that i like troy to go uh cover in week one man all right okay uh utah state plus 42 points against alabama i think nick saban lets his foot off the pedal utah state a little bit better defensively than people think and all they got to do is get a couple of stops against like the backups in the fourth quarter score a touchdown and that you know that 53 to, to seven, you know, I guess that wouldn't be a cover, would it? Right. <laughs> that, that, 40, that 47 to nothing turns into a 47-7, and Utah State gets the – give me the 42 – that's too many points. Give me the 42 points. Give me Utah State. Yeah, a couple late scores would be good for Nick Saban to get mad because they get oh, yeah. Texas next week, so he keeps them motivated, right? Uh, he, I, might I actually, like he might actually help it happen. Right, right. I, I think Utah State covers here. I think the one thing about, that you would like about Utah State for a cover is that they can score. You know, they have an experienced offense with Logan Bonner, a quarterback. They brought in some P5 transfers at receiver. They didn't get off to a great start against UConn. I think they were just some of the little sloppy early on. Their defense got nine tackles for a loss against UConn. So it will be a test for Alabama's offensive line to see where they are. But with Texas coming up, and with Utah State's ability to score, I like the Aggies to cover that 40-plus points. Okay, we've disagreed one time, Stephen. We're going to have to disagree <laughs> at some point here. Uh, Miami of Ohio, plus the 16. This one has come down from 20 against U UK. I'm going to take Kentucky here, even without Chris Rodriguez and without some other pieces. I think Cavassier Smoke goes in there. I think Will Levis does the job. I think Rich Scarangelo gets the offense going, just like Liam Cohen did last week. I'm taking you. The Kentucky UK. I don't know why I was about to say UConn. Give me UK Big Blue Nation to cover that 16. People sleeping on the cats now. Now they're motivated, and Mark Stoops is using it against uh, the uh, the Red Hots. Man, I don't know where to fall on this one. This one's tough because you could see like the backdoor cover coming into play for Miami of Ohio. Brett Gabbert, the quarterback. I think they can at least have some success on offense. Kentucky Take it. With, with the rebuild offense. So. I am going to take the Red Hawks to cover. It is against my better statistical abilities here because Miami <laughs> in the last five of their last six games against power five opponents, they've lost by at least 20 points. So that, that tells me to take a Kentucky, but I'm going to take the Red Hawks. All right, there we go. So far we differ on Mizzou, Louisiana Tech, and K Kentucky and Miami of Ohio. Uh, Memphis plus 16 against Mississippi State. I think this is a revenge game for Mississippi State. They had all that crazy nonsense last week or last year in this game where Miss Memphis ends up winning the game. This is at home for Mississippi State. Will Rogers, that 3-3-5 for Zach Garnett is better than people think. Minus the 16, Mississippi State. Well, so we're, we're going to disagree again. I, I think Love it. The, the, the point spread on this one, at least for a Memphis team that has a good quarterback in Seth Hennigan, I think they can at least maybe get that backdoor cover. I do worry about Memphis from a playmaker standpoint. It's great news for Mississippi State that Calvin Austin catches passes for the Steelers now, and he's not returning punts at the last minute uh, for Memphis. But I just something just tells me here Memphis at least can get the backdoor cover at 16. But to your point, Mississippi State at home, revenge, this was one I have a hard time picking between. All right, so we're different on that one as well. I like it. I like it. Uh, Georgia State plus 13 against South Carolina. I'm taking the 13 points here. This is a weird line to me. I thought it would be larger. I know you're going to have some thoughts on the offensive and defensive line matchups. Spencer Rattler, a lot of hype for South Carolina. This feels like a balloon deflate moment for Shane Beamer, and I that's not what I expected. I, I'm kind of taking the 13 here. I like South Carolina to win, but I'm, I'm going to take Georgia State in that rushing attack. Yeah, Georgia State's... I think it's my play of the week because I think they can keep this game close. Keep in mind, 
they they beat play of the week play Play of the week week. (laughs) week. (laughs) they they beat tennessee in 2019 they kept it close against auburn last season losing by 10 of course this was a little bit closer uh at the end of the game than that but this is a veteran georgia state team and they bring back a lot of experience on both sides of the ball they made a switch at quarterback last year late in the year once they did that combined with their running game you know they went on a run i think one seven out of the last eight south carolina struggled to stop the run last year i love the addition of spencer rattler and the weapons and i think there's a lot of momentum a lot of good things those the good feelings I just think that 13 is a lot for this Georgia State team. So I, I like Georgia State and the Panthers to go on the road and get a cover. All right. We're both on we're both on the Panthers there against the Gamecocks. Spencer Rattler and company not excited about that. All right. Last but not least, Florida State on a Sunday night. Going to be a ton of fun. A lot of drunken chaos down in, ba- in, down in New Orleans. Florida State plus three against LSU. I am taking LSU minus the three. I believe in Brian Kelly. I believe in the LSU defensive line. I, I, I like some things that Florida State is doing. I like Jordan Travis. I like I like some of it. I don't like it enough. And I think LSU is much better than people think. I hammered over the six and a half. And much like everyone drinking beer in New Orleans this weekend, over six and a half beers for everybody, hammered all the way down the line. Give me LSU minus the three. Where are you going with your Knowles? Man, this is a tough one. I, I think if you can get like if this spread gets bigger than three, if it gets up to like three and a half or four, I'm I'm still going to take Florida State though. I think if it get the more that this line grows, I think I would take Florida State. But at three, I'm going to take Florida State because I think LSU wins by a field goal. Sit Florida State six and three in their last nine games. I love the progression of Jordan Travis, the running game. I just think that LSU's got the best position group on the field, and that is the defensive line, and they make a couple stops in the fourth quarter. LSU's offense will be a work in progress because of quarterbacks and offensive line uh, for the Tigers. But I think Brian Kelly starts off his tenure, welcomes the family uh, with a three-point win over Florida State. So you're taking an LSU? Uh, I'm taking Florida State to lose by three to okay, cover. You got, yeah. you, so you got FSU. All right, so we got some differences here. I got LSU minus three. You got Florida State plus three. I got Mississippi State minus 16. You got Memphis plus the 16. I got Kentucky minus 16. You have Miami of Ohio plus the 16. I got Mizzou laying the 20, I think. And and you got Louisiana Tech taking the 20. So we got four games that are different, which means I'm going to be sure to be way behind after one game. We did not pick Elon and Vandy, Sam Houston State, and A&M, Mercer, and Auburn. We're not picking those games. But every single game of the SEC schedule, you can get it right here on Fringe Element Podcast and YouTube page, 440 Sports, every single Friday morning. Stephen Lassen, where can people find you? Where can people follow you? Where can people watch you? At Athlon Stephen on Twitter. Check me out at athlonsports.com for my writings and all CFB 365 on YouTube. And what is your top? Your top pick is Georgia State plus the 13. That's your number yeah, one Yeah, and Troy would be the second one. By the, I, I probably should have mentioned that. Okay, so here. Georgia Tech and Troy are your five hoagie sandwich lock of the week's uh, I like that. I'm going to take Utah minus the two and a half uh, as my lock of the week, along with Cincinnati. I mean, Arkansas minus the six and a half against Cincinnati. Those so are my we two. Do, we disagree. We, get, we disagree. On the locks. So the ones I'm actually betting on, the ones I actually have money on, are, are Utah minus two and a half and, and Arkansas minus six and a half. So they're the two that I'm betting on. So uh, there you have it. So like in true SEC fashion, should this be like, you know, Five star sun drop, uh, you know, whatever the golden flake, golden, golden flake. That's the, it. Yeah, the, the, this is it. my yeah. five golden flakes of the week picks, yeah. or maybe uh, yeah. the flying J or the pilot or right. uh, yeah. you know Milo sweet tea or any other companies we can get free shouts out to here on the show. I drink unsweet tea. That might be an SEC violation. Oh, that's a major violation, bro. Put some lemonade in there. Get some sugar <laughs> in there, dude. Get some sugar in there. Uh, Steven's great, man. You guys check him out. Of course, you can also listen to the Cover 2 podcast, uh, all things college football nationwide. And of course, uh, Aaron and I, every single Wednesday on the Fringe Element, regular podcast. So lots of stuff, lots of ways to listen to Steven, lots of ways to follow his work and read his work by an app on Sports Magazine as well. My name is Braden Gall. Thanks for hanging out with us again, making picks for every single stinking SEC football game. And we'll see how we do at the end of the year. Uh, There you have it, folks. Enjoy week one. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Share the show, everybody. This has been the Fringe Element here on the 440 Sports Network.